Welcome back to the garage. As you can see, today's video, we're gonna be all about drag chains. We're gonna show you how to add these out to the machine. We're gonna show you how to plasma cut out the different brackets for the mounting the drag chains and the process of putting drag chains on your machine if you guys would like to. It's been requested by a lot of you guys. We're finally get around in, getting around to doing the drag chains on the XL plasma cutter. For those of you that don't have an XL and only have uh, Gen 1 or Gen 2 machine, we do not recommend adding the drag chains on the X arm. It's just too much weight. It's going to cause you issues. It's okay if you want to go and add them over here on the Y, but don't do it on the X. You still need the cable support. So with that, we're going to get into the video and show you how we're doing it on XL. So we're down in the shop, guys, and we wanted to cover a few things down here. The first thing we wanted to cover is the cable. Unfortunately, if you use the original cable that we called out in the plans, and we still call out, it's not really the best cable to use for drag chains. You need a cable that's capable of flexing and flexing and flexing and flexing over and over and over. So we're going to call out a secondary cable. It costs about 50% more than the cable currently in the plans, and we'll have one listed at four with drag chains, without drag chains. So we're going to need to have a different cable. We don't recommend using the cheaper cable because it is going to break. It will break over time, and then you're going to have trouble uh, troubleshooting what your problems are. You're going to have some motors not working. You're going to have some switches not work, and they might work intermittently. It's going to be very difficult to troubleshoot. So we recommend spending the few extra dollars on the front side if you're going to add cable chains and do it properly. Now, when you see our machine out there, uh, it's cold, it's the middle of the winter. We won't have the updated cable in it quite yet, but for the video today, uh, we're using the existing cable, but we recommend this cable. Now, what's different about this cable? Well, one, it's a high strand count cable. So in each one of these conductors, uh, the four conductors here, this 18 gauge wire, there's 25 different strands of wire. So it makes it very flexible. Um, this cable has a rating of 3.7 inch radius. So a seven inch, about a seven inch curve on it. And it's good to bend and bend as one cycle. It's good for over 8 million cycles on a that seven inch diameter, three and a half inch radius. So that's what we're calling out. That's in the plans. One thing that's a little bit different about this cable than our other cable is the shield on it. Um, I took a razor blade, I slit this, and I'll pull this shield off, or the, the jacket, but this has a braided shield on it, so it covers the whole thing. Our other cable that we called out had a tinfoil shield and a bare drain wire that, used, that we hooked up uh, per the plans. Now you're gonna have to use this um, braided shield to hook up for your grounding. So the correct way to do that is to push that down and make a little pocket in it. You know, we use a screwdriver. You're going to dig out a little, it's, a, it's not an easy process, but you're going to dig out a little pocket without breaking the strands. And then you're going to pull the wire out side like I've already done here. And then you're just going to twist, twist this back together. And then you can either put a piece of heat shrink on it, splice on a longer piece of wire, but you should protect that shield. But so this is a little bit different to work with. So enough, enough on the jacket of cable. Now we've got the cable chain. And this is a this cable chain that we're calling out of the plans is a 50 millimeter wide cable chain. Now this cable chain will accept all the wires for the motors, the limit switches, and the torch wire. So our torch we'll be able to run through here now. The only torch that can probably do that is a machine torch because they generally come with a 25 foot uh, lead. A regular handheld torch that you see us use won't be long enough to go through the two sets of cable chains. So if you choose to never upgrade to a machine torch, you could choose to use a narrower cable chain than what we are calling out, but the plans will only call out the 50 millimeter. So with looking at the cable chain when it's folded like this, we can see this radius is only about four inches. And according to the spec on our cable, we need to run that closer to seven. So when we mount this on the machine, 
we're going to have the bottom mount and the top mount be up taller so we get that seven inch uh, radius in there on our cable chain. So we'll show that when we get the, when we work on the brackets. So how does cable chain work? Well, it's just made up of a number of links like this. And so there's all these links on there and you do get end pieces for each end to bolt on with that. You just take it and you snap each one together. Make sure you've got the same ends matching the same way. Then they snap together. Then you can grab another piece and um, there's a left and a right on them. So that one snaps and that one's going to move this way. And that makes sure that when I put this one on, they both move the same direction. So I got that together. I can snap the next piece together. And a lot of times you're going to leave the one side off and just keep, just keep um, building links with this. Oh, I grabbed two of the right ones, but you're going to keep building and you're going to leave one side off here so you can drop the cable in once you're done. So another important part with cable chains is when you're laying the cable in, you need to lay in the cable uh, very neatly, nice and neat, and you lay it all the way in one cable at a time, and then you lay the next cable in right next to it. Um, you only want to tie wrap at the very end of the cable chain uh, to maintain the proper flex. You don't want tie wraps along the process. So lay one in, get it in position, run the next wire, lay it beside it, make it very neat. We don't want cables crossing over and doing like that because that can create pinch points. So here's an example on one of our 3D printers. You can see that the tie wrap uh, on the end of the cable chain and how nice and neat it's ran. And then it comes down on this end, they didn't even tie wrap it in. Uh, you can see the other one coming out of the control box into this cable chain and it comes around a little tough to see but there's a tie wrap up there but you've got to run your cables very neatly and another cable chain here so they've got to be run neat you don't want to create pinch points and chafing points on that cable Well, we got the parts cut out out in the garage and we took a second and cleaned them up. Um, we're going to now try fold this together. This is for the x-axis mount that's going to mount up on the x-axis on the motor. Um, so uh, we, you've, if you follow the channel for any time, you see that we oftentimes put bend lines in things. So it allows us to bend things by hand and then we'll just come back and spot weld them. So I'm going to take this part and bend it up and these are going to be the side pieces and we'll see how it fits in. So... Takes a little bit to bend it. Check square, we're pretty good. This part's gonna fit in here like that. And then I'll get the other part um, bent over. Should auto square up when I put the parts on. So these are going to fit in here, and this one's going to fit in here. Need more hands. And that fits in, and we'll get a couple tacks on there, and it'll make up our box for our mount for our cable chain. And our cable chain will screw up on here on that end piece. So I've got these brackets here for the Y cable chain, and basically all they're gonna do is screw into the bottom of this uh, frame rail, and then we're gonna run some angle iron across it to guide the cable chain in. So all I'm really gonna do now is take these and screw them into the bottom of the rail with some self-tapping screws. So I've got the cable chain 
bolted in on this end uh, to the mount and you can see I got these little pieces of angle iron that will guide the cable chain into place. So what I'm going to do is just tack weld the angle iron onto the mounts with the chain in here so I know where these mounts have to go and I'm letting the chain guide me. So we took a couple minutes and we welded the angle irons to the two uh, brackets that are going to mount the X cable chain. So we're going to go ahead and get this mounted back up on the frame now that it's painted. We thought it was very important to mount the drag chain bracket onto the X gantry before the auto squaring. So as this moves, it can get out a square and this needed to pivot along with it. So by mounting it to this tube, uh, we should solve any problems with that getting out of line. You know, it won't happen while running, but you know, while it's sitting or getting bumped around. routing the cables now we've taken them off the cable support arm and we're starting to route them into the cable chain we'll start with the x and z first and get them into this chain now remember guys we're using the uh, original cables from the machine we're not putting in the flexible cables today it's just a little too cold out in the garage to handle that and we need and we want to replace some of the connectors when we do that and we're waiting for the connectors to come in so the uh, brackets we made do have a cable tie slot at the end for him. So Jackson's gonna start out with a cable tie. So we've got a few of these, show them Jackson, we've got a few of these um, pieces now that we can clip in every few places to keep the cable chain in place. They just snap in. Since there's so much extra space in this chain, it's not the end of the world if the cables don't lie flat. But if I were to run the torch cable through here, that would be something I really need to be paying attention to. So now we've came to the point where the cables coming from the X and the Z are now joining with the cables from the Y. So we'll get these anchored into this tie wrap and then we'll anchor these tie wraps here. Well guys, we had a successful day. We got all the drag chains put on uh, with this project. It was a it was a nice project. It had been something that a lot of you guys have been asking us to get done. We've had a lot of requests. When are we getting the drag chains? Well, we finally got it in with the plans. Now, we took a little bit of time and we cut out the brackets that go on here. We could have 3D printed those instead, but all of you guys have one of these machines. You have a plasma cutter. Not everyone has a 3D printer, so it made way more sense to plasma cut out the brackets and put it on there. So with that, we'd like to ask a question to you guys. Would you like to see more videos of us adding more features to the machine? Or would you like to see some videos of cutting and how to and, and tuning in your machines? What type of videos would you guys like to see from us? With that, I'd like to thank everybody for sticking around to the end and make sure to like and subscribe.